Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker. Thank you for joining me today. Today I created a really simple card which mostly just uses coloring. Arteza was kind enough to send me a set of their Everblend markers and I thought I'd try them out. They come in this really nice case which would be really good for travel. They also sell this case separately from the markers in case you wanted to pick it up for any of your other markers. I'm pretty sure it would fit most styles of alcohol markers. One thing I really like about this case is those sides are Velcroed together so you can open up the entire thing and lay it flat and this makes it much easier to access your markers. So here's a closer look at what these markers look like. They are triangular in shape. They've got three sides, so they won't roll across your desk when you place them down. These are double-ended alcohol markers, so you can see one side has a bullet nib, and that's that side, and then the other side is a chisel nib. Now, I am completely new to these markers. I'm still learning about them. So for today, I wanted to just try them out and I wanted to do a card that involved a lot of coloring so that I could see how they work and get a feel for them. I have a piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock and I picked out this really light peach marker. And if you take a look at the cap that I have in the corner there, you can see that on the cap is the name of the color as well as the number. I used the chisel nib end of the marker to create a really quick background by doing some freehand stripes all the way down the panel. I took out the One Cool Pineapple stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and I took out one of the greetings from that and I stamped it onto the panel using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Now I know I used this stamp set a few weeks ago to create some watermelon cards, but I really wanted to make another watermelon card today. I'm just digging the look of watermelons right now. So I took the watermelon stamp from that same set and I'm stamping it all across the entire background using Versamark ink. So this is a watermark ink, so you're not gonna see it very well in the video, but it shows up well enough for me to see for coloring. Now, this isn't on camera, but before I started coloring, I took all of the markers and I created a swatch chart so that I could see what each of the colors would look like on paper. Based on that swatch chart, I chose all of the colors that I was going to use for these watermelons, and I started out with these two shades of pink. Like I said before, this is the first time that I'm using these markers, so I don't know all of the best techniques yet. It's going to take some time to get used to them and learn the best way to color with them. With every new coloring medium that you acquire, it always takes time to get used to them and to really learn them and find the techniques that work for you. So for this first time that I'm using these markers, I decided to do some very basic coloring and I actually start out by just filling in the entire area with the lighter of the two colors and then I add a very small amount of shading. For that shading, I took the darker of the two markers and I added just a touch of that along the top left edge and then I blended that out with the lighter marker. You might notice as I'm coloring these watermelons that the stamped lines are kind of showing up through the ink, and that's because the Versamark ink is actually resisting the alcohol ink that I'm putting on top, and it's creating this kind of ghosting effect. I actually really liked the way that that turned out. I thought it gave the watermelons a little bit more dimension. Some of the initial thoughts that I had while coloring are, number one, I really like the colors. They're very vibrant, and I just think they're very pretty. Another thing that I found while I was filling in the watermelon shape was the ink looked a little bit streaky and you could really see all of my marker strokes, which I didn't really want. I wanted a really solid image, but I found that it would look a lot better if you kept going over it and as you added more ink and really saturated that paper, those streaks would go away and it would get more solid. This might be a really normal thing with the bullet nibs, but I'm not really sure because this is actually the first time I've ever used a marker with the bullet nibs, so it took a little bit of getting used to. So definitely my first big recommendation when using these markers is to make sure you're laying down enough ink so that you don't have those streaky lines. And on that same note, I also noticed that I needed to use a lot of ink when blending the two colors together in order to get a nice even blend. All that said though, in the end, once I got all of these watermelons filled in, I was very happy with the way that it came out. 
For the rinds on my watermelons, I decided not to grab the typical green colors that you might normally see, and instead I grabbed these blue-green turquoisey colors. And this coloring is completely basic and totally simple. I didn't do anything special, I didn't do any blending, I just filled in those colors. I purposefully kept all of this coloring very simple because I figure you gotta walk before you can run. For the seeds on my watermelon, I decided that instead of black, I would use this dark chocolate brown color, and I really liked how that color went with all of the other colors. I did use the stamped lines as a guide for where I put the seeds, but I did not make the seeds as big as they are on that stamped image. I decided I wanted much smaller seeds, and I just did little dots. I also used that same marker to add some small dots to my background. Using my ATG gun, I added some adhesive to the back of that panel, and then I adhered it onto a piece of peacock teal cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I then adhered that entire panel onto an A2 size card base. To create the look of the white space that you typically find between the watermelon and the rind, I just took a white gel pen and I drew a line along that space. This is an unnecessary detail, you don't have to do this and the card would still look good, but I always like to add these little touches. I thought that the bottom right side of my card looked a little bit bare and I wanted to add another watermelon there. So in order to protect the peacock teal cardstock, I placed a piece of post-it tape along that edge and I stamped my watermelon and I colored it in really quickly. After that, this card is all done. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this card design, trying out those Arteza Everblend markers. All of the supplies that I used for today's card can be found in the description down below. And remember that anytime you use one of those links, you're helping to support this channel at no extra cost to you. If you enjoyed watching today, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe hit subscribe so that you can see all of my future videos. I have new videos every single week and I'm gonna be back with another one really soon. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.